Hi, I am Chanshekar Gupta and we are discussing programming concepts. Today, let's try to discuss about dynamic programming. If you remember, during our childhood, maybe in 4th or 5th standard, they made us to memorize tables. 8 8s are 64, 8 7s are 56 and so on. They have done that because we may require that calculations in our day-to-day -day life and it will be a waste of time if we perform it then and there. Similarly, in the real world scenarios, when you are try, when you have written a computer program for it, there are some cases where you need to use the previous results. In that case, we will try to store the result in an array or hash table which is computed and we will make use of it whenever it is required. We will try to look at an example now. Let's try to understand dynamic programming with the help of an example. Consider Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci of n can be calculated as Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci of n minus 2. Let's say Fibonacci of 0 is minus 1 and Fibonacci of 1 is 1. If I want Fibonacci of 2, I can get by adding minus 1 and 1 which is 0. Fibonacci of 3 is Fibonacci of 2 plus Fibonacci of 1 which is 0 plus 1 and 1. If you just observe, if I want Fibonacci of 8, then I can get it from Fibonacci of 7 plus Fibonacci of 6. Similarly, for 7, I can get it from Fibonacci of 6 and then 5. If you observe carefully, for calculating 8, I need 7 as well as 6. For calculating 7, I need 6 as well as 5. So, if I calculate 6 over here, I need not perform all the steps which are required over here. That means, whenever I compute the value of Fibonacci of 6, I will try to store it inside a table or an array. Fibonacci of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Whenever I calculate the value of Fibonacci of 0, which is minus 1, I will put minus 1 here, 1. Fibonacci of 2, 0, 1, 1, 2 and so on. So, by keeping track of all these numbers inside an array, if I want to get the value of Fibonacci of 5, I will just try to refer from this table, it, its value is 2. So, 2 will be replaced in this position and I will not perform further operations. This concept of storing these numbers or storing the results which are computed earlier is called memoization. But in the case of memoization, we are making use of memory to reduce computations. This will be widely helpful when we are trying to have a computations which are very much repetitive. This dynamic programming comes very handy in case where we have optimal substructure that is formed throughout the process like in the case of Fibonacci sequence. It can be even used in all calculating all pairs shortest path and all of these examples where we try to use the results again and again. So, that is dynamic programming and for the execution of dynamic programming, you need to have overlapping subproblems and optimal substructure. In the case of overlapping subproblems are the problems that are being repeated and optimal substructure means they have to be used in your code. Even though the program is repeated and if, you, if they are not used in a particular iteration or if they are not used at a particular pace, that will be of no use. If someone asks you what are the necessary conditions for dynamic programming, Overlapping subproblems and optimal substructure are the necessary conditions.